join us friends to welcome our celebrity and guest who is joining us all the way from Chennai is Mr. Ramani sir. We'll get to know more about his life. He's connected with the wind and the solar energy and more uh, to that he's a great humanitarian and focused on making the impossible possible. Hello sir and welcome to the session. Thank you for being a part of our journey. Thank you. Thank you sir. My dear friends, I go ahead and share Sir's profile, of course, with Sir's permission. Sir, with your permission, I share your profile and we begin the session, Sir. Please. Thank you very much, Sir. Friends, it's always a honor and pleasure when we share the profile of our celebrity and guest. You must be wondering as to who the celebrity today is and what is his role in this universe. It has been 40 long years on the professional front. Let's get to know more about him. Join us, friends. As I earlier mentioned, he's Mr. Ramani. Actually, he is Mr. N. Ramani, and he has a lot of experience with minimum 40 years of experience in the field of IT, renewables, namely wind and solar energy in India. He has been responsible for balance sheet as MD, President and CEO. He holds a bachelor's degree from the Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. Mr. N. Ramani has, as I earlier mentioned, four decades. So it's not like just four years or 14 years or maybe 24 years, not even 34 years. So the year, the beauty is it's four decades, four decades plus, you could say that is really very nice, out of which 30 years are, have been, you know, focused on building a beautiful space with regard to renewable energy, mainly focusing on wind energy for the last uh, three years in solar energy as well. For nine years, sir has been in the IT industry, mainly in the... Uh, as a customer support that's really nice sir to know about it and sir has association with the indian institute of science from 1978 to 80 uh, 1978 to uh, 1981 81. yes uh, sir, thank you sir for checking me on that so 1978 to 81 dear friends many of you would not have been born uh, at that time and sir has been focusing to complete his be and he's done that very well. He has been very active during his uh, youth days. He has been uh, the mess president, the gym secretary, the arts club member, gym library committee, etc. Very, very active with extracurricular activities as well. That's wonderful. So all the youngsters out there, take up the opportunities that come to you. Just like sir has done that during his youth. At present, he is the advisor to Suslon. Uh, on operations in Tamil Nadu, if I get that word right, Atta group of companies for their, uh, you know, something connected with solar energy, that is 200 megawatt, if I get that right. Sir, as his own company, where he is the chief executive, and uh, with regard to energy space, as well as Windia Green Park, Private Limited. Earlier to this, he was an advisor to the wind projects at Larson and Truber, that is LNT. Earlier, he was adding as I was the head uh, as president of the wind business of organization, Orient Green Power Limited, uh, part of $10 billion uh, Sri Ram. He also worked in Delhi, Hyderabad, Chennai, etc. In that industry, he has great knowledge that has helped him uh, open up and update himself with the use of technology, you know, to go ahead and surge ahead in his profession. Sir is very ably supported by his better half, that is Vishalam, if I get her name right, and daughter, Pooja. He has a lovely family, very supportive. When you have a supportive family, you really can reach heights. And Sir is a, a, a professional active member. Government of Tamil Nadu nominated him as Tamil Nadu Electricity Board Advisory Committee member. That's wonderful. Industrial Development or Department, you could say Industrial Department, Government of Tamil Nadu, Tamil Nadu Industry Guidance and Export Promotion Bureau nominated him as member of working group for formulation of sector specific policy for clean energy. Sir also played an active role uh, in the Indian Wind Tribune Manufacturers Association in strategizing wind policy in general and state specific policies, etc., to expand wind industries in India. So, this is something very unique, my, my dear friends somebody connected to you know the natural resources of the world of this universe that is the wind energy and solar energy how to tap it out in the same way the human brain also is having unlimited potential so let's get to know more about it as how we could correlate things 
served was the national council member of the Indian Wind Power Producers Association, playing as a catalyst role in getting the national level policy for the investor community. Sir has been, been the leading torch bearer for the wind industry, fo mainly focusing in Tamil Nadu. His contact and control over the subject of execution is well known around all circles in Tamil Nadu. To lead the task force of the IWTMA in Tamil Nadu for re, uh, readdressing or you know connecting with the problems concerned with this industry, the wind and the uh, solar energy resources, etc. Sir has been a very social active member. He's also uh, been a part of the academic and professional life. Uh, he's very active in social circles. People love him for who he is. He's very straightforward yet humble at the same time. He has been the president of JCS, a moment for leadership and development friends, and of course connected with the Lions Club as well. He is an active lion. He has been. He had been the president of uh, R K Nagar Lions Club as well as he held the position of district chairman for various activities. He has sponsored many education scholarships related projects. That's wonderful. He has a kind heart as well, and uh, you could say he's a philanthropist as well. He has uh, also committed, you know, that's wonderful what I'm going to share. He's committed to donate his eyes after he's no more. That's wonderful. He has been a regular donor of blood and saving several lives. That shows that he's above, uh, you know, the normal people who are there just living, eating and surviving. But here a person not only contributed in a, his services, but also has contributed what the Lord has gifted him from within. That's really nice. His eyes is, has been donated as well as he's a donor of blood. And he is the elected member of the Indian Institute of Science Alumni Association Management Community. Uh, that is from, uh, you know, 18, uh, uh, 2020 to 2022. And much more, if I've just slipped off anything or skipped anything, uh, kindly forgive me, sir. Friends, when you meet people like this, you are amazed and mesmerized as to how people could reach such heights and stay strong after four decades. There are people who are dropping out of various job roles just after four months, four days, or it could be just four years. How to stay strong and be a great professional? Let's learn it from our celebrity and guest. Here is Ramani Sarbugas. So I've been sharing your profile, but people would love to know more about you. And we'd like you to share and describe yourself. How would you describe yourself? Who is the real Ramani Sir? See, as we started off, uh, my philosophy in the life had always been problems or opportunity to find a solutions. Never ever there is a problem. There is always a creativity taking place. Even in our Ithikasa, Puranas also, you'll find lots and lots of opportunities are there. Earlier occasions, Maybe I am more fascinated by many of you or some of you may be aware there is something called Narasimha Avatar in our uh, holy scriptures. Some king got a boon. He cannot be killed by a man, woman or a beast. The same king got a boon. He can't be killed in the daytime, nighttime. He got the same king, got the boon that he can't be killed on the ground, off the ground. He got the boon saying that he can't be killed inside the house, outside the house. He can't be killed by any tools or weapons. If you assume these are all the conditions put, and this have always we come across problems in the life, so many problems and so many limitations and restrictions, still... In our scriptures, there had been ways and means of finding a solution to such problems. So, the way Nasaratara, he became a lion-headed human. He put the king on the lamp, so he's not on the ground, off the ground. He stood, he sat in such a place, he's neither the inside nor the outside. He used his fingers to kill him. Thereby, for every problem, there is a solution. But I always think what to do, what to do, what to do. You always find a solution. These are all had been my various undaps motivation catalyst for my growth. 
when professionals around come across problem as an obstacle, I use it as a stepping stone to use my creativity. See, make an attempt. I'm sure if you don't make an attempt, success or failure doesn't happen. If you make an attempt, there's a possibility you will succeed. When the world around you, most of the people around you start feeling fagged out and not very motivated, I feel making an attempt itself is a greatest virtue one can do. And with your perseverance and uh, dedication and there with all to achieve the end result, you will always find a solution. Always find a solution. So first, never ever get defeated by problems. These are all stepping stones for your glory. That's how I used, I used to say, even at the end, is part of the bend. Have the firm belief. These are all a phase and means of making it happen. That's how my life, professional life has been, which helped me to position and grow, not only myself, as well as pass on this radiance of positiveness around. It helps the society also, apart from professional. That's really nice, sir. Thank you for sharing. And I like the way you focused on you know, for every problem, there is a solution. You have to search for it and don't give up. I really like that. Because we find many people giving up very easily. You've been really focused on making it very clear at the start itself. Every problem has a solution. And your solution focused, that's really nice, with a positive mindset. And it's a growth mindset. Wanting to try, instead of just sitting down doing nothing, try. Either you succeed or fail, but at least try. Give it a, a, a try. That's wonderful. Uh, you know, you're very encouraging in that way. Now, sir, I, it's the, you're the first celebrity over here who's connected with wind and solar energy. I've been interviewing people from different pro professions and different walks of life. You're the first person with regard to wind and solar energy. So I'd like you to share, uh, you know, the importance of wind and solar energy in simple terms for the common man to understand and how they could tap these beautiful resources gifted by nature. See, instead of talking philosophically, this is another avenue to grow. As simple as that. Let me not say I'm dedicated to this green environment, non pollution. Everybody looks for money. So, this is another opportunity. Maybe, God willing, I started or joined this industry 30 years ago. That's in the very infant stage. So, I had all the more opportunity to grow with the industry of India itself. In India, in 1987 would have been the first uh, so wind would have been there. Whereas I am there from 1991. So I had seen through the growth and uh, accelerated pace and we have reached this situation now. And if at all India is a force to reckon with in the last couple of years its uh, solar installation has been booming in an explosion way. These are all a commitment by the nation. Incidentally, you'll realize country like India, which is too vast, has lots of scope for renewable energy, more on solar and wind in particular pockets. Again, India has been bestowed the long sea coast, eastern coast and western coast. The cyclones or the monsoons which comes across or sort of an example, I'm not saying that's the reason, that's not an example, that's how the wind comes across the east coast and west coast. And when such monsoon goes through hilly ranges, and if there is a gap in the hilly ranges, you'll realize that gives a tunnel effect, which is very, very useful for wind energy generation. People can think, wind energy, can I not put it in a beach? We have such a vast thing. For wind energy to be more useful, more practical, more economical, there are some parameters like it has to have a particular wind speed. What we come across in beach in Bombay or Chennai or Kerala, across Vaisag uh, and uh, Orissa and things like that, the wind may not be suitable for economical proposition. We have to have a particular wind, which need not be in the beach, in the sea coast. 
there are some places in uh, tamil nadu down south near kanyakumari it's easy to for the people to understand we may call muppandal and things like that there's a tunnel effect so there again in coimbatore region there is a tunnel effect is there so such tunnel effect gives propulsive wind velocity which makes wind energy more economical also there had been there were lots of financial gestures available schemes available which helped the people to go for a renewable energy more wind energy etc there have been state tax uh, concessions income tax concessions and some subsidy given by the government etc these were the initial stages with which people could take off now it is no more uh, growing stage we have matured there up and people had seen the fruit of uh, renewable energy so it becomes uh, fair with all for the people to go behind that and nurture it now maybe the industry has gone from some just numbers we call some 55 kilowatt up to we are talking about a 3500 kilowatt you can see 50 to 3500 is such a huge explosion of uh, capacity of uh, wind industries turbines capacity has been there and from a 30 meter height we used to have or 100 feet height we used to have a wind turbine earlier now it has gone past 140 meters or 150 meters to 450 feet so it has gone through a lots of uh, growth in terms of technological marvel as well as heights and speed and uh, capacity so this uh, yeah, and india being a vast country lots of lands are available unlike europe there the land may not be available we are forced to go to offshore in the sea in the beach whereas india has a lots of wind uh, land parcels available so you can go back and back and back and uh, that will not be uh, far away when turbines will be put all along the wind uh, sea coast also there's a time to come so when you look at it it has a lots of immense uh, land bank capacity with which wind can go on uh, expanding also when uh, india is a tropical country and uh, we get hot hotter hottest uh, situations only in most part of india and uh, that helps solar energy also a prime energy mover i'm sure with the latest government also coming with uh, uh, solar energy on top of the house what they call roof to uh, solar that is going to give a impetus and uh, the day is not far away we will not be looking at uh, coal import gas import or petrol import to run the thermal uh, to run the power plants so we should be away from uh, pollutants to a green energy which is renewable energy in terms of a coal i'm sure all of us will accept there is a limitation to the availability and more and more you go deep into the earth the cost of extraction also more so one is to assume it is available but assume the cost of it go on increasing whereas the wind comes and goes and tesla like there is no cost of transportation there is no interstate rivalry etc people may say that uh, this state ka water that state ka water i am i'm not giving it because i'm not uh, my uh this is beyond my capacity only i'll say there is a wind which flows through the various states people can't put a barracks to stop the wind in the same way solar also which comes directly from the top sun and there is no limitations or uh, transportation problem of uh, raw materials thereby these two gives a lots of scope for uh, india being self sustenance without depending on coal petrol gas etc we have for see uh, maybe in uh, 20 30 years we have come across almost 60 70% of the uh, uh, today requirements will be met by renewable energy yes. and i'm sure that uh, the present government is also giving a lot of impetus to the uh, vehicles we are moving away from diesel and petrol so we are talking about the uh, electric vehicles and things like that so you will find uh, india will be a more greener as well as less dependent on a forex imports etc
Yes, sir. Thank you, sir, for the clarity and for the explanation that you've given it out so well. Maybe a simple uh, child could also understand that and as well as a senior citizen could understand. You put it in very simple terms. Now, sir, how did you get an interest into this field? And why did you enter into this field? What was it that inspired you, inspired you towards the wind and the solar sector? See, I had been in the IT industry for some time. As the fate would have it, I joined here. So I will not try to say that I preferred a green industry as a no. It's a natural uh, collaborative uh, effort for me. So I joined here. I found being a very nascent stage, I started the very initial stage. I claimed uh, my uh, professional growth had been more on the waves of growth of the industry itself. So it was a big situation for me. So I liked it. So what was the age like you were focused into this space of being concerned with the wind and the solar energy sector? Like, What age was it like? Was it the second part? Or, I mean, like, was it after 30 years or was it before that? No, no, no. See, uh, uh, as I was talking about, India itself is experiencing it from 1988 or 1985 onwards. So I joined the industry in the 1990-1991. So... I have been part of the growth that helped me to go through various nuances of various pros and cons of various technologies and various states and uh, various commercial uh, structuring. And it also requires a lot of structuring, which requires financial structuring, which helps people to tailor make the product for their requirements. There can be a few people like textile industries, cement industries, which require power more and their cost of production, power plays a major role. If we are able to put renewable energy after initial five to seven years, they pay back their loan and the cost of production almost coming to a very negligibly small compared to what they may be paying to the electricity goods. I am sure across India, year after year, cost of electricity for the domestic as well as industrial commercial goes up and up and up. Whereas when you have your own power plant like renewable energy, where the cost of uh, raw material is zero and transportation cost is not there, and there is no barricades or there is no uh, protocol problem between the movement of uh, wind, etc. This becomes the easiest solution. And I'm sure even for the house, people will find with uh, better financial support from uh, government, every house can afford to have a solar on top of the house. And they should be able to take care of 50-60% of their requirement through the solar itself. That's another opportunity. Wonderful. So that's really a great suggestion. That's really nice. I hope people come forward and understand the importance of solar energy. Thank you very much, sir. Now, sir, what are the challenges that you face or you faced in this field? Were there any challenging situations and how did you overcome that? Any growth has to have a challenge. Even as we grow from a childhood to adolescent to senior citizen, there are also some challenges. And without challenge, there is no life. We have to accept challenges. And of course, as I was talking about... Uh, See, there were times electricity boards were thinking we are competitors to them. We are competing with them. We are taking away their main customers. They were worried about their revenue getting hit. To make a mindset change that we are not competing with them, we are enabling them has taken a lot of time. Also, the infrastructure required, the way the private industry grows fast, government electricity boards may not be able to comply with the pace. So again, we have to come with some strategy solutions to them which they will take immediately for, they will start assuming it is in their own interest. 
for example, the infrastructure to be developed by them, which was taking time instead of scripting about it, can be developed on our own. If I'm developing it, if I'm investing it, how do I tie up with electricity boards that I, they reimburse the fund to me? So this has gone through a beautiful uh, revolution of making them understand I will do their work of creating the infrastructure also. And uh, that's what we call it substation service. Whereas we go to the next level, the substations are made from power has to go from one place to another called transmission lines, which becomes a major problem. There also we chip in and uh, do it. A point to be noted here, in India, all the more a democratic country, democratic setups, whether, whether you are doing a road project or a power project or a renewable energy project, one of the main problem is the land acquiring the land. We require a particular, say, four acres, five acres land. In India, the documentation process itself is a bit uh, unique. For us to get the funding from bank, the documentation the bank requires, practically such document are very difficult to get in the field because it has been written, saying the source has given it orally. And it has been there. He has been using it for ages. Whereas to convince the banker, this is how the industry works, etc. This is how they think. So we have to make both the ends meet. There have been lots of uh, educating the bankers also has to happen, so which we have gone through. Like this, lots of hand-holding with the other enablers like financial institutions as well as the electricity boards. We have to make them educate so that we are successful. See, this is where the challenges we face we have overcome. Uh, now the system is almost in frenzy. Now 80-90% of the problems are sorted out. And then there is a new new problem because we have to overcome it as and when it happens. Yes, sir. That's really nice to share. Very interesting to know all of it, sir. As you said, there's a competition between the electricity board and uh, you know uh, the people who are connected with the wind and solar energy. As you said, they are not we are not competing, we are enabling. I really like the way you put that. You coined those two terms. Now, sir, we'd like to know about your youth when you were the gym secretary, when you were the president of the NES and all of that. What was that journey and how did you enroll and become all of these? How did you enjoy your uh, college life? Repeat again. How did you enjoy your college life? You were like the gym secretary and you were the president of the NES and all of those things. I'd like to know more about it. And enjoy the life. Enjoy and the life. Yeah. Education is also part of the life, not the end of the life. So enjoy life as, a, as much as possible, no regrets. So maybe such extrovertness has helped me in my professional life also because of that uh, creativity, whatever I've got through the arts club and painting club and music club, all that has enabled me to be a more extrovert. Socializing happened, so which helped me to interact even in my college, I was an engineering student. I was interacting. I had more uh, research scholars as a friends. So it's a different paradigm shift I got uh, exposed to. So when I'm an engineer, when I'm interacting with the government officials, I say I'm coming from a reputed, international reputed institute and things like that. I'm interacting with them. I have to, at the end of it, communication make them understand, accept what you are. That's most important. I can't be sitting in a different pedestal to talk about it. So... You have to be yet properly. You have to understand with the people. Yes, I am part of them. How you do it? So my uh, college days has helped me to make it part of being the society, socialness. I was able to take it forward. Yes, sir. We'd love you to share an anecdote with regard to your college life. An anecdote with regard your, to your college life or the various roles that you've uh, undertaken, like as the um, Mess president, the gym secretary, the arts club, etc. Any memorable one which is evergreen in your memory? 
see uh, the philosophy of life is when you look back there should be a smile on you that's our achievement so uh, being in a reputed in this institute international institute being a fostler we had a tell of a time we had a, such a nice uh, friends all over we come across a uh, full spectrum of uh, uh, professionals and students where we can come across a uh, good rub off effect from various things and we came across people from across india so you will realize uh, any incident you remember specific incident like any specific incident you said you were a hostler any incident with regard to the hostel or with the mess or the gym any question is i should say uh, there were facilities in the institute where we can work during our uh, studies we get paid student assistant program or something we get paid some money we were so you had to uh, jumble up your timing so that you ensure you do that work also you be work in the mess to issue coupons or we go to the library to arrange books or we work in a uh, labs to help them and things for that which is not any way clashing with your uh, studies so thereby we are able to earn money and uh, some of our uh, friends even for me when i have applied abroad and things like that that money had been used to uh, apply for a uh, various uh, american universities or something like that so that made us feel yes we can be a uh, self sufficient also so you have to man management time management is the most crucial thing which we learned in the hostel time as a student did you bunk college as a student did you bunk college uh it's a good question uh, to tell you how i enjoyed my life i was in it was engineering was a three years course i was a hostler on an average i saw 13 movies one three per month on an average still what i am today so instead of saying whether i got good mark bad mark is not what i am looking at so at every moment of time i have been i have not let the time pass i have ensured i explored exploited enjoyed thoroughly so that way it helped me to learn various languages also i am very proficient in various subject and languages in, apart from that hindi english and of course i can understand gujarati and punjabi also to some extent so there are opportunity one gets through the hostel where you have a come across the people from various walks of life so it's a beautiful experience Yes, thank you for sharing your experience with regard to movies as well. As you said, one, three, thirteen movies you've been watching for a month. That's really nice. And explore everything. Explore all the possibilities. Now, so what did you admire in your professors when they came to class? What was it you were looking out when the professors explained or they gave you a task or a project to be completed? What kind of professors uh, you know attracted your attention and in whose class you were very silent and very attentive see the if you google it india of science is one of the very reputed internationally and the professors are all uh, international doctorates they are masters of the subjects when they are coming to teach you if you are very uh, sincere one can learn more the basics foundation will be too strong if you are not sincere the way i am doing enjoying the life that's another way still you can pass to you so this is the you know and uh, lots of uh, all the professors it's very really difficult to say who is and who is not all have been in doctors doctorates having a rich international experience they have been a uh, visiting professors uh, abroad also so thereby uh, they are able to bring in a lot of uh, international experience also to us that helped us to uh, in our uh, educational pattern i should say god has been kind one could uh, stay course in those institutes as one should being surrounded by all intellectuals i'm sure that there will be a rub off effect for you also to learn more that's a very good experience any person uh, any professor you admired his his teaching skills or his creativity while teaching 
do you remember this? I mean, anybody like clearly like this was the professor whose Im impact on my life or on my thoughts has been really profound. No, oh, um, it's beautiful. I, instead of talking about a professor, I should talk about my uh, two professional colleagues or professional seniors. I should say that, sir. One, it's better to mention his name. He's a PK Asija in a HCL. I learned hard working from him, perseverance from him, his steadfast approach, no steady winterist approach from him. And sometimes, matter of fact, I worked for uh, some occasions, a remote place, put into the middle of the sea. I had to swim across. I worked for 36, 48 non stop hours, no sleep, etc. So, Initially, in the start of a career, when I was in dumps, when nobody, all the time, said, sir, please come and help me. He used to say, no, no, try this, try that. I used to feel, what the hell, they are ready. Nobody's helping me. When I look back, more they didn't come to my institute physically. They guided me. They had given a lot of uh, positive vibe. That's one way of uh, creativity, perseverance. I have another uh, extreme. C.R. Sitaraman, especially he taught me the world is not black and white. World is gray. Incidentally, one side of the spectrum is black, other side of the spectrum is white. He made me to think all together out of box. That became my forte in my professional accelerator. So for me to switch from uh, uh, hard working to a smart working, it's a two different paradigm shift. I had, uh, God has been kind to come across such people with whom I had a beautiful interaction. I learned a lot from both of them. I owe my uh, growth, my life to both of them. They have contributed so much. Incidentally, I'm in touch with them. See, without knowing, they are uh, passing on the frag and they are like clovers. They have been passing on the frag and going up, picks up, goes picks up. So I learned a lot from them, which I use for my. And professional and life group. Naturally, one can't be different in the life and one in the professional life. So the rub off effect of professional life in babe on your personal life also. So it's a uh, beautiful. So as you're talking about a uh, known to persons, yeah, instead of talking to professors, I can talk about these two gentlemen who has converted so much for my uh, uh, life growth. Thank you for sharing, sir. That's really nice. Thank you very much. Now, sir, what was the most difficult phase in your life? Like, you faced a very difficult phase, but you overcame that with a lot of perseverance and consistency. What was it? The turning point, you could say, in life. Did you ever face a situation like that? Yeah, it may become very highly technical, the most turning point of things like that. For every problem, we can... I was working in uh, MD of a company and uh, we had lots of technical problems. Our collaborators' uh, technology was not shooting to India. They came across so much of a problem and we are also trying to grow. The technological problems are pulling us down. So there has been a phase of growing as well as uh, technology pulling us down. My another family friend, Paul Raghunathan, had been my uh, Guru, guy, philosopher, he converted every problem. The guy, even now, uh, losing with confidence and uh, things like that. Uh, especially, other two gentlemen whom I talked about had been my guidance, whereas this uh, Raghunathan had been holding my hand throughout my life. And uh, since I know him in the last 15 years, we know him so thoroughly, closely. Both of us know each other well. We know our strengths and weaknesses. We hit on each other so beautifully. And uh, instead of talking about uh, turning point and things like that, my out of box thinking and the perseverance, what he taught me for every problem, he never talks of problem. If I, there is a problem, find, find a solution. You are paid to find a solution. You are not there to talk about problems. See, higher and higher you go, no space for escape. You have to find a solution. 
you have to get the sun onto the earth. It's just simple. I, maybe it's a beautiful example you should talk about. I'm fascinated by that. Maybe in some of the India course, this uh, case study would have been there. Two examples which forms the uh, basis of my life. One uh, toothpaste company also increased their production or marketing. So every year, uh, every scheme they come with our company. So in one such, the CEO was making a thing, I want to increase it, things like that. So people said, you have paste also, brush also, tooth, like a mirror also, all that they said, uh, free these and things like that. <laughs> and one of the guys said, uh, how to increase uh, market share. He says, how to spend more paste per usage. People said, I didn't get you. He says that in the early morning, you are in a sleepy mood, you take a brush, apply the toothpaste, make the mouth of the toothpaste big, bigger. Such a small thing makes the people to think that's how the solution has to be found, not the regular uh, rudimentary uh, philosophies. And, uh, ask a different question, different question, different you. Question it differently, you find the solution immediately in front of you. Maybe another uh, example also. Maybe uh, Americans and Russians were at that time uh, fighting for uh, each other in a space positioning. And uh, one problem Americans are finding it pins because the different gravitational force it was leaking and things like that. They are trying to find a solution to it. So. Uh, one of the guys said, uh, find a solution. So they have been spending millions of dollars in the R&D. And I said that, why don't you copy what uh, Russians are doing? Then he said, why not? So incidentally, uh, it seems, uh, it's a case study which people say, for out-of-box thinking, they say, the writing instrument need not be pen. It can be pencil also. So ask a different question. You find a different solution to it. And uh, another uh, Paradigm shift can be a long back lifts were introduced. So people are very happy for the staircase. In America, 40 floor, 50 floor, 100 floors. So it was going slowly. So there were lots of pressure on a lift manufacturing company to increase the speed. So uh, <laughs> again, these are all the funny questions. One should enjoy the funny questions rather than feeling upset. As a marketing head was saying that I want speed to be in place, r and guy said the technology is not possible. A technological guy, technical guy, r and guy from one of the, the classroom said, why increase the speed? He said, no, I want to go, go fast. Why you want to go fast? What nonsense, yeah. I want to go fast. What, what makes you to go fast? People feel irritated. Stop, stop. So people are feeling irritated. How not to make them feel irritated? The question is, not to make the military the solution, not the speed. She put mirror in the lift. So people start looking their face in the mirror in the lift. So they forgot about the speed of the lift or irritations. So you come across lots of such uh, examples to motivate you to think what all the ways of uh, finding a solution. If you have a problem, approach the problem differently. Put the problem properly once you finish framing the question properly you yourself will find a solution this is a mantra for everybody same questions you learn question at different different angles you find a solution yes as Thank i said instead of they feeling competitor we make them enabler so that uh, i am also with you you're also with me so let's do together so you have to psychologically attend, psychologically attend. Don't try to compete with them, question them, and so on. Because you're all saying, right? He's paid, yeah. He's paid to question you. He's asking you. Accept them, agree with them. If you are there in this position, what will you do? If you are looking, every problem with empathy and things, there are solutions available. That I said, I am right, you are wrong. It doesn't take you long. So find the solution.
Yes. Thank you for sharing. And, you know, to top it all, the cherry on the cake is the toothpaste, as you mentioned that, you know, the toothpaste to have the mouth wide open, you know, a uh, little bigger such that when we are in a sleepy mood. So it happens with us and I really could relate with that very well. And thank you for sharing all the other important things. Yes, so you'd like to share something? You'd like to hey, add? One can go on and on and on. It's a, I yeah. guess not a thing. So ask maybe another example when you, uh, American car manufacturing company was looking for a particular print. They have started giving a specification. They could not get a print available locally in the Japan or something, for example, I'm using the country. Whereas the same person going to the sun in the road, he found a toy having the same paint. Then he realized, what is that? So it's a normal paint. If you're adding so many adjectives, then such things are not available. Normal paint, non-corrosive paint, and things like that, abrasive paint. So uh, there are some, ask a different question when you're formulating a questionnaire. It says that should reply the answer properly. Yes, that's really nice, sir. Thank you for sharing. Now, I'd like okay. to know your bonding with your parents. How was your bonding with your parents? Were you close to your mom or dad? I thought I'd been kind. I had been, uh, I had been with them. Yeah, I had been with them apart from uh, up to schooling. I was there with them for a uh, bank tour as well as daily 10 years or uh, two years in Hyderabad. I was not with them. Maybe 15 years, I was not with them. Subsequently, balance of my life have been with them till they did their last. So, their upbringing also matters the most. So, posthumous values, value systems, and uh, yeah, you'll realize the SRS with a lower middle class family one has to come up, how much of dedication, sacrifice they have done. To bring us up. So now I'm sure that all of you would have been born with a silver spoon or a platinum spoon to enjoy the life. Whereas the amount of uh, problem you would have come across or they would have gone through to make us grow. When you look at it, you feel melancholy saying that, yeah, they have done so much. You should also do so much for other people, if not for your family, because anyway, your family will come across. Maybe much, all of us should start thinking, paying back to the society, whatever we can do. There are so much society is looking for uh, everyone, everybody can contribute. Not that uh, even if you are able to uh, handhold one person from this side of the road to the rest of the road, that you are helping, not necessarily finance is the helping hand. So think about it. I am sure God has been kind to all of us. Look positively, enjoy the life. Thank you. Yes, that's really nice, sir. That's wonderful. Sir, so, I would like to know about your school life. Like, how was your school life? I mean, like from LKG to 10th or from the kindergarten stage right up to the 10th class. I would like to explain your journey over there. Any specific incident you remember? Your favorite subject? <laughs> See, uh, for everybody, it's uh, school days are uh, nice days. Up to college, it's a, it's a free bird, no? So all of us enjoy the things. And I've been brought up in a very... Uh, I'm very proud to say I'm coming from a low middle class family. And the uh, educational system had been good. That's had been our foundation for our growth. So, not that uh, we used to pass on the dress from the elders to us. That's how we passed on. Once my brother has passed his school or something like that, his uniform will come to me. That's how we have been born and brought up. Not that we had a cycle also to pedal because we can't afford it. That's how we have been born and brought up. Instead of saying that we never had it, look back and say that the humble beginning we are able to grow. So there's a, so much self-confidence and comfort and uh, happiness you pervade within you, which you can pass on to others also. Life is good. Enjoy. Look positive. Yes. As you mentioned, life is good. I really like this. Life is good. The way you said the, that beautiful one-liner. But so I have a very big question for you. There are youngsters out there in their mid-twenties and early thirties, you could say, or they could be like, you say you can anything ranging from 20 years to 35 years. You could take that range. 
and they all have complaints against the upbringing of their parents. Many of them, I've been a counseling psychologist. I've had many clients who have spoken to me and complaining about their parents. They are now adults, but they are suffering from childhood trauma and unable to overcome the challenges they are facing. They say they are into depression. They always say that there is some family problem. As adults, how long can you keep accu accusing your parents and you know pointing out to the mistakes of your parents? Once you're an adult, you should take charge of your life. I'd like you to just enlighten these people if they happen to view this video. What is the message you'd like to give out to all of them from all the experiences that you've had around you? Yeah. Maybe here I should start with the parents first. One characteristic of a parent's uh, psychology, I suffered, my children should not suffer. Whatever their younger years, what they have not achieved, they want to give it to their kids on a platter. In this way, they have done a greatest injustice to the second generation. They have not exposed, I will not say thought, they have not exposed their kids to the problems of life. They have seen, as I said, we never had a bicycle in a family. We used to go by bus and things like that. Whereas my daughter would have uh, been going in a two-wheeler or a four-wheeler and things like that. See, unless otherwise they get exposed to the hardship, you go and stand at the bus stop, bus doesn't come, there is no bus stop, you are sweated out, when the bus comes, there's so much of a rush, you have to squeeze in and uh, I'm sure as a lady, there are some, uh, it has its own uh, nuisance values. Still, you have to climb up. And the people creep mainly because they have not been exposed to the other side of the life. They must expose. They should, uh, Israel is uh, celebrating their uh, birthday, the cake and things like that. Can they spend the day or let them take the cake or a chocolate to the slums and uh, people on the roads? So that, that happiness, they should get exposed too. Once they start getting exposed to the other side of the life, they'll start feeling, yeah, that day the happiness I had seen. So it's like saying that uh, one rich man has taken the son to the uh, village and at the end of it he said how is it he says that uh, papa i have only one fan in the house and one ac in the house they have an open terrace so full of ac or ac here. so that where uh, they start looking at i have a dog in my house to take care of me or a thing whereas they have so much of dogs to accompany so people must the parents must expose their uh, kids to the other side also one of the reasons why senior citizens' home have come up, etc., also, the generation has not seen the bondage parents and their uh, grandparents. What they have not seen, they are not able to reciprocate. So this is a... You grow what you sow. So my uh, humble suggestion to the parents should be exposed them to the other hardship of the life. Take them to the people who have not, not the people who have got. So they will get exposed to them. They will understand the other part of our life. Before they ask, now the everybody is asking, Two I can't even imagine. I was getting a score of 18,000 rupees or something like that. Three lakh is a too huge a value by any standard. So any vehicle is going to take you to the same place. Why the three lakh rupees? Why not a one lakh rupee two wheeler? See that, uh, because my friends are like that. See, they have to be taught, exposed. Yes. You want a comfort, I'm giving a comfort. Comfort or a luxury, or you have to define it. So this exposure one has to expose. I'm sure with such exposure from the childhood, the scripting in the later part, adolescence will come down. That's a wonderful way to share your thoughts and views with regard to that question, to expose the children to all kinds of, uh, you know, situations around them, not to only keep them in comfort, you know, because when later stages come, arrive, they are unable to face the real challenges of life. So exposure is a very good thing. I really like this concept, sir. Very interesting. A big takeaway for me as a mother and as well as for our friends 
who are viewing this. Now, sir, we'll talk about organ donation. You've donated your eyes. That after your death, your uh, eyes uh, could be taken away and, you know, some other person who was visually impaired could benefit from your eyes and you're a blood donor as well. Now, how did this beautiful transformation within you come and how did this thought process evolve that I donate my eyes and donate blood as well? I think you're talking about donating eyes a great uh, gift. People I had known, they had gifted their body after the death for uh, medical uh, things. So, we have to, again, this is all an exposure to the outside world. See, after death, if your eyes are going to somebody, you are not a loser. Somebody is gaining. Without losing, somebody is gaining. Why not? Let's look at it that way. So, even uh, I'm happy that Tamil Nadu plays a very predominant role of uh, organ donations, etc., which is very prevalent in uh, Tamil Nadu. So when you get the news and things like that, all of us should contribute. Not only feel happy to read the news, we should also be part of the news and contributing to the people's uh, donation and things like that. Give what you can. Give what you can. We always grip about what we don't have. Whereas we have two eyes and uh, two liver, two kidneys, and start two hands, two legs. Think. See, I'm sure uh, you initially will say that I don't have, but then uh, maybe it's like a small uh, snippets, I should say. In the election meeting, when the speaker was talking about that party has uh, leader has got so many cars and so many things. Why not he share this, share that? Yeah, he's only accumulating the wealth. So one guy from the crowd said, "Sir, uh, will you share?" He immediately said, "Whatever I have excess, I will share." Then he said, well, "How do you define excess?" Then he said, "Whatever is more than uh, required." He said, "You have two eyes. Can you donate one? You have two kidneys. Can you donate one?" See. You start looking at it. Don't question the guy. Just don't feel the guy is arrogant. He said, I open up for you. Look, one can achieve more better. All of us can make the world so beautiful. And uh, with so much of WhatsApp university, with everybody access to it, maybe one or two years, all the dead people contribute their uh, eyes. India will become a blindless society. Such a beautiful watch should one should. Good. Nice pleasure meeting, talking. Okay. Yes, sir. yes, sir. Okay. I had a wonderful time with you. Thank you so much for your time, sir. We look forward to many more interactions with you. I had a very fruitful time with you. With you shared a lot of wisdom. Thank you very much. God bless. Thank you. Maybe you can send me the link, which will help you. Yeah. Yes, sir. definitely, sir. My dear friends, with this we come to an end to the International Fab Talks. We had a wonderful time with our celebrity and guest. He's Mr. Ramani, sir, who has shared his expertise and wisdom with us. Do stay tuned with us, my dear friends. If you like what we are doing, like, comment, subscribe and share this video. You never know who might be wanting to listen to all of this. Stay blessed and stay safe. Thank you.